Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Analytical Eye Show. It's your boy, Javier. Cheers. Just water today. Same old thing. I'm on... Remember I told you I'm on my diet, so... Trying to be on my diet, shall I say. So, water it is. Nothing wrong with water. And yes, it came from the damn faucet. I don't care what anybody got to say. People bitch all the time about... Do you drink from, do you drink tap water or do you drink uh, regular water? Like, do you drink water, wh what bottle of water you, look, it don't even matter. Because as long as I'm not like Flint or I think it's Mississippi or Louisiana, one of the cities in those, one of those two states that has a water crisis going on now too. God bless y'all, praying for y'all. Um, but, um, hold on, I just noticed my patio light is on. I didn't turn it off this morning, hold on. Sorry, that shit. No, I know this shit at the corner of my eye sometimes. So, um, and if y'all, let me say this, cause I have to my my camera. I've been having some issues, so I have this mirror that is facing the camera behind the lights and the camera to show me um, if it's still recording or not. Um, let's be real, it's on my iPad. That's what I mean by my camera. I'm filming this on my iPad. Um, so. When the, uh, because I had dropped it not too long ago, it's been acting up, so I just want to make sure that anytime, so if you see me look past you guys, like straight, but I'm not looking directly at the cameras because I am looking at the mirror, so that way I can make sure that it is still recording. And I, if I do these movements, or like I'm shifting like this just to see, just like to move like this, I'm like, okay, it's still, that means it's still recording. But anyways, <laughs> um, yes, tap water. Look, you got it, we cook, we bathe, we wash our clothes with this tap water. Why can't we drink it? What, what we too bougie out here? What you want Aquafina? You want Dasani? You want Fiji? Uh, you want um, Zephyr Pills? Um, you want the A Avalanche? Um, what other waters are out there? Smart Water. You want that? Uh, I forgot what that other water water is called. The one that has like that red logo with the emblem on it. But you what? You, um, what you want that one in the green bottle? Like, it's, it's, it's just too much. Too much. Water is water at the end of the day. And I bet you my bottom dollar that all they do is they put that same water, that's that, that's that tap water, filter it through, not even filter it, but probably put it through something to make it taste a little different, and then hock up the price and have you paying five, six, ten dollars for a bottle of water. Ain't nobody got time for that. Look, I pay $50 a month for this water that comes through these pipes. And I'm gonna drink this damn water. It is what the fuck it is. I'm not too bougie to drink water. It is what it is, you know. I'm just just that person. And why and and just that's just how I am. I'm just not I'm just regular. I grew up drinking tap water. I'm not gonna be too bougie enough to continue my adult life. It is what it is. Judge me, judge me not. Whatever. There's more important issues going on in this world, like what but what we're about to discuss today. So, we're gonna be talking about what is a minority, okay? So, I'm going to give you, um, let me say it like this. First, before I even begin this conversation, stop thinking of yourself as a minority. Because you're not a minority. Because minority means small, right? So, I get it in the United States, when I've done my research, is that it says that average, averaging out about 70% of the United States is made up of white people, right? So that anybody else in from that is minority because the minority is 30%, so smaller. I don't think of myself as a minority. When I, when, you know, when they say whites and my, when they say minorities, and they, that means black, white, I mean, that means blacks, Hispanics, Asians, Mexicans, um, anything that's not white, right? Um, but why do we call ourselves minority? When you think small, you act small, then you will be small, right? So why are we doing that? So, what you call yourself is what you're going to be. Especially if you continue to drill it in your head, and they already drill it into our heads, that we're no good, we can't do better than, we, you know, we need them for guidance, we need their Lord and Savior, which is, in a sense, sometimes not the same as what I, you know, what we mean, you know what I'm saying? It's usually white power, or where they're on top. And they're gonna strive to be on top, and it's and or, and oh, oh, I was watching The Wire, and I think there was a comment that was made by stating that it's con it's institutionalizing white people's heads to not think that they are on top, 
and they're always on top, is that they are the top and everybody else is below them. But I'm not below you. I'm not below you at all. I'm not a minority. I'm not small. So when people say minor don't count when you say minorities, don't count me in that, because I'm not a minority. I'm not small. I may yes, there may be more white people in this country than there are my black people or Africans. That's cool. But I'm not a minority. I'm not. That's just how it is. But let me give you the definition of what minority means. Because I'm gonna give it to you the way that it says from Google, per Google. It says, and this is from Gemini right because google has gemini ai it says a minority among minorities is a group of people who are part of a minority group that is also part of another minority group being a minority within a minority group can be challenging but it can be overwhelming okay and then it goes to say a minority is a group of people who characteristics that distinguish them from a from the majority of the population these characteristics can include race, ethnicity, religion, nationality, gender, sexual orientation, and a disability. In social, science, in social sciences, a minority is a group that is subordinate to a more dominant group. Now, this is actually the first time I've actually read this part. So I have a, so I, I, remember, I live down here in Florida, so if y'all see me sweat a little bit, I also just got out of the shower, so I might be a little hot. And I had to turn off my AC to film this because I have my purifier. I have humidity in this house. I need to buy a dehumidifier. But I have I had to turn off my AC. And I didn't want my fan on because the microphone is here. And I don't want it to pick up. And then you guys are like, what the fuck is all that noise? So, you gotta suffer a little bit. But this is the first time I'm actually reading this. And I was a little worried when I read that first part that says... A minority is a group of people who are who have characteristics that distinguish themselves from the majority of the population, right? That part, I felt like I was going to be having to rebuttal maybe what I had said before about being, I'm not a minority. Because then it's like, okay, well, then I guess I am. But that part right there would explain, okay, there's some understanding why I'm a minority. I'm a minority. But that's this second part is what's the kicker. And I'm going to, this is why I have the analytical eye show. Because I'm going to look, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to explain to you guys different points of views because I feel like I just kicked myself in the mouth by just reading that line a minority is a group of people who have characteristics that distinguish themselves from the majority of the population I have characteristics I have style I have uh, a way I carry myself my style y'all seen you know there's certain ways I, I carry myself and how I talk how I breathe all this stuff like that that make me one out of the bunch that I like I outshine by everybody else so if that's what that said okay cool I'm a minority by that point but then again no, I'm not. I'm just different. That's all that is. I'm not a minority. Because although the way I talk, the way I breathe, the way I cook, what I cook, how I look, how I dress, how I sing, how I act, all that stuff, and who Avier Artrell Vassal Rutherford is, is definitely different from everybody else. There's only one me, and there will only be one me. So that means everybody's a minority then. And then God is the majority, Right? Not to go religious on you, but I'm just saying. Or whatever you believe in. If you don't believe in nothing, you believe in Allah, Buddha, whatever it is. But I'm just saying, you get my drift. So, but then that next line, that next paragraph that it says here. In social sciences, a minority is a group, uh, is a group that is uh, subordinate to a more dominant group. White people call us minority because we are a subordinate to them. They're dominant. They're on top and they are the top it's not that they're on top or they're going to do everything to stay on top or they think they're on top they it's been designed or trying to be conditioned that white people are the top and it gets no better than them that they are the best thing since sliced bread and that ain't true it ain't even begin to the close to the truth white people this is a psa announcement white people you are not the dominant. You're not the head. You're not the tail. You're not the alpha. You're not the omega. You're not the beginning. You're not the end. You're not the sun, the star, the moon, the quasars, whatever it is. You are none of that. And you have no control here. You have no dominancy here. You have no dictatorship, no anarchy, no monarchy, no nothing. And the best way to show y'all that is that you guys created this thing called democracy, right? And then it backfired in your face because every single century... We come back with ways to beat y'all in elections, fight for our voter rights, fight for women's rights, fights for rights in our education. But then you always try to make it a step back by taking away our history books, taking away our culture, appropriating our culture, black people. 
okay? They do anything and everything to try to steal our shit and claim it their own. But then when we try to take it back, like Beyonce doing country, but Eminem can do rap? What? Child, bye. You miss, miss me with that bullshit. But let me finish the paragraph. So it says, in social sciences, a minority is a group that is subordinate to a more dominant group. This subordinacy is the main defining characteristic of a minority group, and it doesn't necessarily correlate to population. Whew, that last paragraph is deep. Deep. Now, I'm going to give you just the Oxford basic definition. This is the reason why, from my perspective, I said I'm not a minority because I'm not small. Because before AI came out with this type of stuff, because it gives you all these different definitions, it gives you all these different definitions here, or different, um, and a lot of these things, I believe, are based off of, like, wh what do you mean when you're asking what is a minority? Because I literally typed in the word minority, and it brought, off the different, brought up the different definitions, or what it pertains to, or what topics it, it refers to. You see what I'm saying? But let me just give you the op. Oxford, which is, I think, a school that's in the UK or some shit like that. So white people standards, right? This is what it says. It says this. The smaller number or part, especially a number that is less than half the whole number. So when you're speaking in reference to numbers and percentages, populations, because remember, a lot of us don't do that consensus. Remember when they knock on our door and, or they send us in the mail that, con that consensus? It's important that we fill that out, y'all. Every time they send that out, I can't, I don't know how often they send it out, but every time they send it out, we, are, we need to send that information. It is important. It's pertinent that we send that in, y'all. So anytime you got to get a, a, what is it, a consensus or a census in the mail, fill out that information and turn it back in. It is important because... Um, it, it talks, it gives a way to uh, demo demographics, economics, um, all of those things that take place within your community, that affect your community as a whole from economics to, 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 to education, to, to ev vote, vote, even voting, all that stuff. It's like a smaller piece to a bigger tree. It's one small root, one small leaf that connects to a little stick on the branch. And then that stick connects to the bigger branch. And that bigger branch connects to the trunk, the whole, the, the trunk of the tree. And the tree and the roots and all that. It's important that we fill out that information. Don't just throw it away. Don't just throw it away, guys. It is important. And I'm going to actually get you a specific reason online of why it's important. Because I know somebody's explained it to me before, or at least I've heard of the reason why the consensus is important. But we're going to talk about that in a minute. Because I have something I never really wanted to get it. I didn't think to get into, but since I mentioned it, I might as well educate y'all a little bit on it. Okay. So, right? It says, the smaller number or part, especially a number that is less than half the whole number. And then there's another one. It said, another definition says, the state or period of being under the age of full legal responsibility. So, kids. Okay. That's something fine. So I scroll down here and it says, people always ask, what does it mean to be a minority? It says, minority, a culturally, ethnically, or racially distinct group that coexists with, but is subordinate to a more dominant group. Do you understand what that just said? So basically, culturally, I can soul food, hip hop, rap, R&B, you know, all that stuff. Ethnically, I actually have <coughs> a culture because white people don't have culture. They, they appropriate cultures, but they don't have they don't have culture, none. So it's basically saying I can be cultured, I can be ethnic, I can be racially different than whites, but I am still subordinate. I am still lower than them. I'm still smaller than them. I'm still under them, like a roach under their shoe. And I know a lot of y'all, if these racist white people ever watch this, gonna be like, mm -hmm, you right? No, boo, you not right. Because me being different than you, distinctively different than you, makes me better than you. Because that means I'm more uh, uh, educated differently than you. I'm more knowledgeable about things differently than you. I, I take, things on take things on differently than you. And the way that I approach shit is from what's been da passed down generation to generation that was earned and sewn into the woven fabrics and patterns of my skin, of my clothes, of my hair, of my eyes, of, of everything that I think, leave, breathe, and do in this life. That definition is a definition of racism. Minority is racism. The definition of minority is racism. 
Say it with me. Minority is racism by white people because this is basically saying if you are anything but white, that is no culture, nothing about you, you are lower than me because you're different than me. How the fuck does being different make me smaller than you? It's like trying to basically say because I'm a square or I, I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm a round peg and you're a square, you can't fit into this hole. So that's what makes you less than me. Makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. Now I love my white people because my boo is white. But that don't mean he better than me. By far, he ain't better than me. I'll, I'll tell anybody that quick, fast, and hurt. I'll say it to his face. You ain't better than me, bro. You not. <laughs> it just is what it is. I, and I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm just different than you. But we're equal. Now, I'm going to say this. I don't know how this is going to go over well. So just forgive me on this. I don't, let me, and there was something I wanted to say, or there was something I wanted to say that I had an idea a while back where it was, I'm not separate but equal. Because that terminology back then, and even still in the now represents uh, segregation, de redlining, demeaning, um, Jim Crow type of shit, all that stuff like that, right? But I would say we're different but equal. We're different, but equal. And that's okay. You may not like me. You may not ex accept me. But you damn well gonna respect me. And that's one thing that a lot of these groups nowadays need to come to accept is that people are not gonna like you. They don't have to like you. They don't have to accept you. But as long as they respect your life, your choices, whatever you do, that's it. And to stop suppressing your beliefs upon their beliefs. Stop disrespecting their beliefs in front of the camera like they did at the damn uh, Olympic Awards. Or the, not the Olympic Awards, the Olympics. With that whole Jesus shit uh, for the opening number. I'm sorry, LGBT community, but you guys were wrong for doing that. That was straight up disrespectful for y'all to sit up there and, and, and do the Last Supper and dis to disrespect what y'all did. Because if we disrespected y'all, we homophobic, we're transphobic, or whatever it is. But for y'all to come and disrespect, and I forgot, I think there was a, even a scripture in the Bible that talked about that, where it's okay that people are going to disrespect me. It was something that, uh, I can't remember the book of the Bible, or something that I read, or something that somebody posted on Twitter, I think it was, in relation to the Bible, where it talks about people disrespecting the Bible, or something of the case. But I know that I read that somebody made a comment, they were pissed off about it, because it was like, so it's okay for you guys to disrespect our God, disrespect God and Jesus. But we can't turn. But if we do it to y'all, we're it's World War Three Thousand. Just want to put that out there. But it all goes in line because remember, it talked about sexual orientation. It talked about all that stuff like that, gender, all that stuff. So that's what makes up being a minority. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to throw that out there. I didn't agree with that. No judgment, pun intended. But I'm just saying. But this is the way I look at it, y'all. I'm not a minority. And anybody else out there that is black, Asian, Mexican. LGBT, um, women, none of that, because let's be real, technically, if you're not a white man, you're a minority. None of that stuff is a minority. It doesn't make us different. And if, let me say it like this, and Selena Johnson said it best, if it's the man's world, then the world is yours because the woman gave birth to the man. There's a reason, and also somebody had mentioned this on social media, there's a reason why God didn't make men to, pro to, to create babies. There's a reason why he made women in his image. Think about that for a second, ladies. There's a reason why God made you the creators to continue creating life naturally, organically, once, once in a lifetime, one of a kind. You realize that God is the only one that can create. God created uh, uh, Jesus from virg in, in the Virgin Mary, right? And that was it. But then he designed women in his image to create more of his likeness. You see what I'm saying? So women, you hold all the cards. You hold all the power. How are you a minority? How? Makes no sense. It's black women. Like Ice Cube said from High Learning, beautiful black woman, mother of the earth, queen of the universe. Be that black woman. Because you are. Mother of the Earth, Queen 
of the universe. But back to this, minorities. So it says that groups that coexist but were subordinates to a dominant, dominancy. My thing is this, how is someone a dominant, how, do, how does someone or a group of people or group, an entity preside in dominancy if every single time we knock them off their peg, knock them off their high horse, every time we're beating them at their own game? They, they punch us back 100 strong, sometimes we come back with 50 strong, then sometimes we come back with that knockout punch, TKO, Muhammad Ali float like a butterfly sting like a bee type of bullshit. That type of punch, how do we do that every single time and they're still dominant? It makes no sense. And if they were so dominant, how did we go from slavery to segregation and Jim Crow to in civil rights to we're excelling? We had a first black president. We're about to have our first black female president. We're still doing things that are pushing that stride. I like to say it like this. Y2, Y2K was the best year that ever happened because I'm telling you, that was a wrecking ball that came through and said, not this time around. Now we're really stepping into a new circle. We're stepping into a new, new era. No more 19, 18, 17 with the number we're starting with. Two, zero, 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 zero. From this point on, it's going to be better. It's going to be more growth, more building upon the foundation that was set forth by the founding fathers that said... All men are created equally, but all women are created equally to man, too. And on top of that, they didn't, the thing that they were dumb for is they didn't think that slavery would end. But in the Bible, it did. This so-called book of the Bible that they praise God so much for, right? But it ended, right? I don't know how it ended, but I just know it did. Because God didn't make man to own man. God didn't make man to own anything. If you read the book of the Bible... He made nothing to own nothing because he owns everything, right? Not to go into a whole religious thing, but I'm just saying, why people put so much faith in the God and saying, this is why uh, slavery should be what it is. This is why slavery is here because it talks about it in the Bible, but didn't it also talk about how it ended too? There's a lot of shit in the Bible that these church folks, these white people, there's a, that everybody want to talk about. But, if, but everything that has happened in life is mentioned in that book. From gay, LG, this LG, LGBT shit, to, to uh, rape, to incest, to, to murder, crime, poverty, warfare, love, hate, respect, understanding, trust, faith, all that stuff. Everything that is in this life is mentioned in that book. In one of those 66 books. Think about that for a second. How are we a minority? Because I'm not. I'm not a minority. Because I don't think of myself as small. I may be a small person, but I'm not smart in here. I'm not smart in my heart. I'm not smart in my soul. I mean, I'm not, ooh, 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 sorry. Not, <laughs> let me back that up. I'm not small in my mind, because I was saying smart, my bad. I'm not, sm I'm not small in my mind. I'm not small in my heart. I'm not small in my soul. I'm not small in my unctions, my being, anything about me. Sorry, because when you say heart and small, it's like, and I have a little bit of a, I don't know if y'all have ever caught in it before, but a lot of times I make, it's not like a lisp, but it's something there, you know, so I call it a lisp, but, you know, the, 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 and the T, the S and the T, you know, <laughs> but y'all, mm, mm, mm. I'm not small. I'm not small. And I know my boo doesn't think of me as small. My boo thinks of me graciously, you know? And he's so pure. Born from Indiana, but the boy is pure. The man is pure. Uh, and I love it that he's so green because he doesn't know much about black. And that's where I come in because I can teach him and educate him and do all those good things, you know, uh, talk to him about a lot of the class, he know he knows shit, but he really doesn't understand until I like he like let's see he ain't watched the birth of a nation he ain't watched twelve years of slavery or I'm pretty sure maybe he's seen the help but he ain't seen all of the them shows and stuff that we be talking about 
he ain't seen. You know what I'm saying? So that's my job here to educate, right? So I'm glad that he got somebody like me to do that because I'm as radical as they come. I speak my mind. I say how I feel. And if you do not like it, you cannot subscribe to my channel. You cannot watch these my, my podcast or listen to my podcast. You ain't got to do none of that shit. You want to know why? Because I don't give a fuck if you do or not. There will be people out there that watch that, that like what I have to say. Or even if they don't like what I have to say, they respect what I say. That it's not coming from a malice place or a malice intention. And it's not disrespectful. And we can have a conversation. That's all this show is for is to spark conversation. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. And so I love my boo. And I know he doesn't think of me as small or anything like that. So let's be real. He's a different kind of breed. This man, my boo's a different kind of boo, breed. Mwah. You know, so I got a good one when it comes to that. Um, and when you start, so moving past, because I kind of diverted for a second. When, you move, when you're moving past, thinking about being a minority, when you shift your mindset, it's always that thing of white people resistant to change. Because they're so used to being in control or they're so used to things being set in one way or the highway. And push comes to shove. No matter how much money you got, you are still black. And at the end of the day, they will make sure you understand that the value on the dollar for you is the different on the value of the dollar for them. Because the color of your skin. And they're resistant to change. But every time they resist, we continue to push against that resistance. You knock on the door, they don't answer, kick down the damn door. Simple as that. We're going to get up in this motherfucker one way or another. And a lot of times they say white people resistant to change. And I know that a lot of times on the show I speak on white people. Let me say it like this. Anybody that is pre pre prejudicial to you is resistant to change, right? Whether you white, black, Asian, Mexican, whatever it is. Because they have their set of beliefs. They have their set of the way they walk through life. They have the set that set of ways that how they orchestrate their family and their comings and goings and ins and outs and how they work and everything like that, how they operate, right? Even including me, I'm resistant to a lot of change and shit. Within ourselves, within each other, within each, everybody else's race and things like that. Um, so let me just say this. My, being that, that minority definition not is just geared towards whites, but it's mainly tailored there. So when I said what I said, it's mainly because white people. But everybody it treats somebody as a minority at some point in time. You have your bosses that treat you like a minority. You have um, uh, your parents that treat you like a minority. You have the government. You have organizations. You have uh, maybe animals sometimes treat you like minorities, you know, because you have snakes and shit that want to, you know, you know, there's there's a food there's the food chain, right? So every living organism ecosystem on this earth gets treated like a minority in some form or fashion. But right now, I'm talking about how white people have done it to blacks. You see what I'm saying? But everything, I just want to make that known. So don't feel that this is just a target to you, white people, because. But I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? But the great thing that I love about today's white people than the ones back then, and some even ones that are back then that are willing to learn, if you've seen that movie Best of Enemies with Twaji P. Henson, it shows the arc in conversation, the arc in mindset, the arc that it can take when two people actually sit in front of each other and realize, hey, we the same thing. We just got different color of skin, color of skin. that's all that is. We ain't nothing is different about us. We're actually one and the same. We're the same difference. That's all it is. You know what I'm saying? You're positive, I'm a negative. You Or you're a negative and I'm a positive. We're a yin and a yang. Let's put these motherfuckers together and complete the puzzle. How about that? Because we can do so much more. We're better together than we are apart. And when, and I say this to you white people or anybody out there that is resistant to change. The more things change, like that saying says, the more they say the same. And I never, under, and before I get to that saying, I wanted to finish up the resistance to change. Let me tell you the reason why. The more you, the more things that you're resistant to change, they will automatically change. The foundation of shit that is pure will stay the same. And I was, when I was watching, I think it was maybe The Wire this past, because I have binge watched it, so I'm done with it now. And I watched this another show called We Own the City. They're both on HBO. Um, and I think I've been, and I was also watching Euphoria and I had that conversation with myself. I said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I've never understood that saying before, but if you understand it, the more things that you change, 
the more crap may stay the same or the more shit that stays, the more, um, matter of fact, not even the foundation. Let me say it like this. It's more of the shit that was built upon the foundation with purity in your heart, purity in what you believe in, purity and all that stuff like that. That's going to stay the same. So the more that you change in life through your mind, your heart, your body, your soul, that fortitude of your foundation is going to stay the same. But then, I, but pertaining to those shows, I was like, well, okay, the more things change, the more, I'm like, the more, the more that they change out all these characters, they still slanging on the streets, they still doing drugs, they still dealing drugs, murder, all this stuff like that in the show, right? Because remember, if you've ever seen The Wire, they constantly, people are constantly dying. People are constantly getting interchanged out of the seasons in the show. They'll come and come, they'll go and come back. But the, the problems and everything stayed there still consistently. And that's what it is when you resist change. Good change. That sounds better than what I was even trying to get to. Damn, sometimes I'm good on that. Sorry, because I was, I was trying to figure out how to say it in a way that made sense and not sound all, like, what the fuck are you talking about? You stupid. But that's what I was trying to get to. Is that if you're resistant to positive change, the same outcome is going to continue to happen. The resistance of positive change where you think that the outcomes that are currently happening are good, that are in, in, in reality that they're not good, shit's going to stay the same. You got to make a conscious effort decision to not only change but improve. Because then that saying where it says the more things change, the more, they th the more things stay the same. That more things that stay the same will start to change too. As long as you're positive. As long as you mean well. As long as you're respectful in what you believe. Right? And then this goes back to the separate but equal. Let me say it like this, because I don't believe in separate but equal. But that tagline, I'm going to take it away from them. Because just like we say, we do the N-word and everything else we do. I'm not going to promote this as a tagline. But separate means you have your community, I have my community. But we're equals. You give me the same history books that you, but you get, we... We are included in, not we, but our history book has my history, your history, my education, your education. And you teach all of it, just like as we will. Same thing with our food, our doctors, our lawyers, our judicial system, our laws. Everything is the same. We can just live in separate communities. That's the only way I look at that. But I do not believe in that tagline. So anybody sit up here and say, I believe in separate but equal. No, I don't. I just believe that I am separate from you. I am different from you. But I'm equal to you. I'm not a subordinate to you. I'm not a minority to you. I'm not lower than you. And you are not on top. You're not the person willing to stay on top. And you're not, you're not the top. You are not the top. Let me just tell anyone out there that. You are not the top. God is the top. The universe is the top. Allah is the top. Whoever you believe in. I believe in God, Jesus Christ. So that's what I'm just saying. But I'm just saying, whatever you believe in, if you don't believe in nothing, then hell, you, ain't, you just ain't nobody on top of you, I guess. Or shall we say Mother Earth is the top? How about that? If you don't believe in nothing but that. But this is all the shit that I'm saying. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And stop covering up for these white people saying they're resistant to change. Uh, I was watching a show, what was it, yesterday, The Chicano Squad. And I think that's maybe where I got it from was the resistance to change. Instead of just calling it what it was, it was racism. They, weren't res they, were, resistant, they were resistant to the Chicano Squad coming into Houston, the Houston Police Department and actually not only just doing double the work at not even the right pay, but getting all the clearance rates. They weren't resistant to change. They just didn't want them coming in and actually doing a better job than they did. Than white people did. So stop calling for what it is. It was just racism. It wasn't resistance to change. It was just racism. Now, maybe there was some that were resistant to change because they were open to it, but they, didn't, they were following the crowd, following the leader, which is not a leader, a boss. Um, because a boss leads you, no matter, and they're indifferent to right and wrong. A leader is like evaluates all paths. And say, hey, you know what? This is the right way to go. Let's go this way. And takes those people, even the ones that are not, uh, that are, are resistant to change along the way and educating them and then changing their mind, their soul, and their hearts. White people try to be the boss of you, not the leader. 
That's why you think that right is a say dominancy. Why do you think it says that subordinates and the uh, basically underlings? Ridiculous. And affirmative action. And DEI, DEI higher. That Project 2025 shit, I haven't read about it. I downloaded it. I have a PDF file of it. It's like 900 pages. I don't even want to read through that bullshit. It's wasting my damn time. I was going to actually so I can educate myself. But why? Ain't no point. I mean, in a sense, I should. But uh, for myself, you know. Um, but when you associate with yourself with Orange Man and today's Republicans, which I want to actually, which was always confused me which I need to do my homework on, and maybe I'll talk about this in another episode, of how Republicans during slavery time voted for the for slavery to end and back then Democrats didn't. And then how did that switch to now we have the Republicans back then are Democrats today and the Democrats back then are the Republicans today? You see what I'm saying? So yes, I respect all Republicans. I don't like all Republicans. I don't, uh, I don't accept all Republicans. Same thing with Democrats. I don't, I respect all Democrats. I don't like or accept all Democrats. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm not even, what is it, independent party. I am affiliated with nobody but myself and Jesus Christ. That's who I'm affiliated with. But I will say on my voter registration it says Democrat party because I'm not about to associate myself with the, at least these Republicans today. Like Mitt Romney and John McCain, those are the type of Republicans I respect. Because even though they were Republican, they had a certain decorum about themselves, where they still respected Obama and Democrats and black people that were in office and stuff. These new Republicans today, they showing their ass, baby. And it's sad because we have to create things like affirmative action and DEI hire initiatives. D diversity, uh, equality, and what is it? A diversity, equality, and inclusion. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Let me look it up right now so I get it right. D E I I R. Oh, and let me look up why consistent before I forget because I want to talk about that. Consensus. Not consensus. What's this? Census Bureau. <laughs> From off of <laughs> DJ Pooh off of the Y. It's just from the census bureau. <laughs> okay. So, a DEI hire is, um, yeah, diversity, e equity, and inclusion. That's why I had it wrong. Sorry. And obviously, it refers to practices and policies intended to support people who come from va varied backgrounds and make them, make, give them the resources they need to thrive in the workplace. So if I am, and see, this is what it is. You see this game of tug of war with white people? You're a minority, but we're going to give you DEI higher. So you're subordinate to me. You're smaller than me. You're underling to me. I'm a dominant. You are submissive, right? But I'm going to give you this DEI higher, right? So we're gonna give, I'm going to give you a carrot. But you can't have the whole salad, right? You see what I'm saying? So, or, or question, I'm going to give you a carrot, but you can't have some of this meat. I'm going to give you some fruits and vegetables, but you can't have the meat. You see what white people like to do with that with this? It's crazy. I found that disrespectful that we have to have a DEI higher initiative. I, I, I love that it's there because it forces white people to, hey, knock, knock, motherfucking open up the door. But at the same time, it's like, you see how they treat us? They know that they, 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 take, us, they take a mile away from us but then give us back an inch. And then that inch we just run with and say, okay, it's fine. But then no, it's not enough anymore, white people. It's not enough anymore. And affirmative action. Give you the definition on that too. I'm no, I know y'all know what these means, but I just want to give y'all, you know. Affirm affirmative action. The purpose of affirmative action is to ensure equal employment opportunities for all qualified applicants and employees, regardless of race, creed, color, or national origin. But doesn't it say something like that in the in in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights? Doesn't it say something like that already? Let's look it up.
It says Congress, in Article I of the Bill of Rights, says, and this was on December 15, 1791, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to as symbol and to petition the government for redress of grievances, right? But then it just say to ensure equal opportunity for all qualified applicants, regardless of race, creed, color, or, or national origin, right? It doesn't also say in the First Amendment, because that one didn't really... I didn't really explain that too well, so that was my bad, y'all. My bad. It says, the First Amendment guarantees freedoms freedoms concerning religion, expression, assembly, and the right to petition. So in the same sense, the same thing as the Bill of Rights, right? That's the First Amendment, right? And so you have that, which is basically what I just read. But it says that we have that freedom in the First Amendment, but then we have to create an affirmative action where regardless of our race, color or creed or national origin, we have to have employment, right? Now, although the, those two things are two different because the First Amendment is about freedom of speech, and then I'm over here talking about affirmative action, right? But isn't it... Let me pull it up like this. Okay. I found it better because my mistake. Let me let me back up a little bit because I'm I'm getting I'm getting all out of sorts. Sorry, I'm even confusing myself. So it says this. I typed in "all men are created equal" is a phrase from Declaration of Independence. That's what I was meaning to look up. There we go. Which was adopted by the Con Con Continental Congress on July fourth, seventeen seventy six. Which is why we are supposed to be celebrating J uh, July fourth. You know our independence, right? That's what I meant to get on is this. So scratch everything I just said. See, sometimes you make a mistake on the show, but you just got to keep on trucking along. Um, so you, so before, so after they won this war, right? Because I'm thinking it's the Man American Revolutionary War. I can't remember too much. I don't really care too much. It didn't have nothing to do with me, so that's why I'm kind of like not remembering. But I know I learned about it in school, so I think it's the American Revolutionary War where it was uh, 13 colonies versus Great Britain or something like that. And we won that war. Well, not we, but they won that war. And then that's when they stuck the flag in the ground. And then they have July 4th, 1776. That's why you have Pledge of Allegiance and you also have the Star Spangled Banner. But then we weren't free until Juneteenth, right? Remember that? So I celebrate Juneteenth. I wasn't free on July 4th. But it says here, Thomas Jefferson intended the phrase to mean that American colonists have the same rights of self-government as other nations that included the rights to declare independence, create new governments, and assume a, sep a separate and equal station among other nations. But you notice it said Thomas Jefferson intended. He didn't put in there all white men are created equal. He just said all men. See what I'm saying? So if we're all created equal, why the hell do we need affirmative action and DEI hire where it talks about practices of policies intended to support people who come from various backgrounds and give them the resources they need to thrive in the workplace? If all men are created equal, it didn't say all white men, and that's it. It, said, it didn't say all men excluding non-white people. It just says all men are created equal. Thomas Jefferson, you fucked up, man. And you sit up and you say that, but then we got to have affirmative action and DEI hire. We got to have, we got to have the function of a policy that ensures equal employment and opportunities for all applicants and employees, regardless of race, creed, color, or origin. But all men are created equal. Then it goes on to say the equality of value. Because that was the equality of rights. It says equality of values. Some say the phrase means that all people are considered of equal value and worth or equal in eyes of God. So it says that, but then we still got to have affirmative action in DEI higher? But you still consider us a minority. You say on Fox News, you say on NBC News, you say on CBS, you say on uh, uh, ABC, you say on all these damn national 
channels and everybody around the world, CNN, B, uh, what is it, BBC, all these motherfuckers say minorities. But yet, didn't Thomas Jefferson say that all men are created equal? But we still need affirmative action. We still need DEI higher. You get, you took a mile away from us and you only give us back an inch. And you still call us minorities. So we're less than you. We're smaller than you. We're underlings. So we're trying to get that mile back by putting in, hey, you already gave us an inch with DEI higher. Let's get affirmative action. All right, cool. Let's get this. Let's get this. Try to get that mile back. But I thought we were equal, though, Tom. America, white people, I thought we was equal. Hmm. Let's move forward. Then it says, uh, euphemism for humanity. Others say that all man was euphemism for humanity. I think that's what that word is. Euph yeah, euphemism. <laughs> That's a little word. I, I never use that word. So. so it says all man, right? So all man created equal. But didn't I just say earlier that if a woman gave birth, if it's a man's world, like James Brown said, then the world is yours, women, because women gave birth to the man and God created women in their image. Uh, God created w women in his image so that way, and they are the only ones that are able to birth men and women. From scratch? What? So, basically, you're saying this. Let me put it into a perspective, a panorama for you. They say, hey, all men are all people created equal. But you're a minority to us if you're anything different than whites or just white men. But we're going to give you affirmative action. We're going to give you DEI higher. But... But we're going to continuously suppress you because you are that minority. You are smaller than us. You are our underlings. We're dominant. You're subordinate. And that's how it always is. And we're not, we're not trying to stay on top. We're not trying to be on top. We are the top. And it don't get no better than this, baby. Child tripping. Last thing I'm going to say on this. It says... Exclusion of women and children. Some argue that uh, of authors of the declaration meant to exclude women and children. Mm. They're, men think about men. They're selfish. That's just how that is. Then it says, we hold the, these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the creator with certain un, un, unalienable rights that live among these that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So if I am able to live a life that has life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, why am I your minority? Why am I your underling? Why am I smaller than you? Why do I have to go and get affirmative action? Why do I have to be a DEI hire? Why can I just be somebody that's different from you with a different background than you that varies way vast, vast past what you think or know or love or think or breathe and be okay to be in the same room with you at the same table with you? Not your table, but just a table. You see what I'm saying? Because you not you are not the top, white people. You are not the top. And that's just how it goes. It's it's I hope you guys kinda understand. I kinda took you back here, here, that, that, because I was trying to find my wording and stuff, and in a sense also this episode. Every episode, in a sense, is planned, but sometimes when I'm in the episode, I, some shit starts sparking in my brain and starts getting my wheels turning, and I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, da, 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 da. you know what I'm saying? I don't have a script or a teleprompter in front of me just reading everything, you know what I'm saying? So, but last thing I wanted to touch on, the reason why senses are important. Census Bureau is indicated to providing current facts and figures about Americans, America's people, places, and economy. And it says, what if you don't fill what happens if I don't fill out the census? It says the final population tally is used to divvy up more than 675 billion annually, seven, 675 billion dollars annually to states for all sorts of programs. By census law, refusal to answer all or part of the census carries a hundred dollar fine. The penalty goes up to five hundred for giving false answers. I didn't know that there was a penalty for that. Um but basically, what it's saying is this. It is important, it is pertinent that we fill out the Census Bureau because it has questions on there in regards to 
It has questions on there. Let me look it up. I'm going to read it right now because I actually filled that out a couple times. It asks you for your name. It asks you for, obviously, your gender, your date of birth. It asks for, you know, your race. It asks for, you know, questions, I believe. It looks like it asks questions about, um, like, obviously, your phone number and stuff. But I think also the Census Bureau, it asks questions about your, I think I, if I'm looking, I'm trying to look for it. If it asks about, do you live in an apartment, a house, what do you own? What's your uh, what's your your salary or your like? How does you know you know what I'm saying a little bit about your finances? Like it says, it it basically goes to divvying up for programs, education, this, that, and the third. So it is important, black people, that you fill out that stuff. It does. It is important. I know it doesn't seem important, but it's important. Make sure you fill out your census uh, form and turn that shit in because that whole thing, just like not voting. If you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain. Because you ain't do shit. If you don't fill out this census, census form, you don't have a right to complain about the funding and the shit that's going on in your communities. Yes, it's red line. And that was another thing. That's another thing. All, all men are created equal. But you give us redlining. You give us segregation. You give us all this suppression shit that isolates our communities and keeps those impoverished communities struggling. You see what I'm saying? We don't have the freedom to educate ourselves, read any type of books we want. But you steadily, steady shoving processed and cancerous shit down our throats and our mouths and our food and our water and everything we do. And I know I just talked about that because I'm like, well, I mean, you just talked about you drink tap water, so that's on you too. But that's different. That's different. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm talking about like Flint and Mississippi and whatnot. But... I hope y'all got what I was saying from this. Make sure you fill out your census bureaus. Make, I mean, your, not census bureaus. Make sure you fill out your census forms. Make sure y'all vote. Stop, like Obama said, stop booing and vote. You can't complain about something if you ain't voting. You can't complain about something if you ain't filling out the forms to let them know. Let the, you let them know, hey, I'm here. This is me. This is my information. Oh, I don't want the, the government to know about me. No, no, no. Let me tell you the truth. The NSA is already watching us. The CIA is already watching us. Look at what Snowden did. He, that's why he had a citizen in Russia and not extradi not n with non-extradition. So he can live out the rest of his days there with freedom. Because he exposed the fact that the government is already watching us. So you, you're already uh, afraid that the government is already watching us. But they already got a, your social security when you're born. They already watch us through NSA, CIA, and all these uh, satellites in the sky and shit like that. Transmitters and our dollars. Like just got said, hawking, watching, scoping, jocking, scrutinize us, all these cameras everywhere through our phones and shit. I'm sure they're listening on me right now through my microphone on my phone. So it doesn't matter that they're watching us. We're getting watched. But, but the best way you can show that, hey, yeah, you're watching me, but guess what? I'm going to show you I'm here. I am here. And I'm going to keep staying here. Get out and vote. Fill out your census and let these motherfuckers know you're not a minority. You're not a subordinate and they're not the dominant and they are not the top. They're not the top at all. That nobody's better than nobody. You can be different from me. I could be different from you, but we're still equal. I don't have to like you. You don't have to like me. I don't have to accept you. You don't have to accept me, but you damn well have to respect me, and I damn well have to respect you. Two can play that game. All across the board. And the only true dominant person here, the only one that's the true dictator, anarchy, or um, uh, monarch here, ruler, King of all kings, king of all queens. The sun, the moon, and the stars, the beginning, the end, the alpha, and the mega. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, he is. Or oh, whatever you believe in. Now, last thing I'm going to say is this. Let's get into our fun facts, shall we? Mr. Alexander Miles. Born May 18th. 1838 in Ohio. He died May 7, 1918. That's kind of weird to die right before your birthday, but the same month. Hmm. Uh, Seattle, Washington. I always thought that when we die, uh, we died either on our exact birthday or the day after our birthday because then, you know, we have enough time. And I thought we always, all of us died as soon as we reached 100, 100. Nobody lived past 100. But then you get older and you get your bubble gets busted and you start realizing people die from cannons and all that type of stuff, right? But anyways... He is obviously an American inventor and also a businessman. He's known for being awarded a patent for um, 
automatically opening and closing elevator doors. He was awarded the U.S. patent 371,207 on October 11th, 1887. So, he's the reason why we have automatic, he, you know, he helped create that. He's the reason why we are able to go up and down elevators. So, I thank you, my good sir. Didn't know y'all, didn't know y'all knew that. He started creating what would then be what we have today, which is modern. You know, back then, obviously, they didn't have actual open, closed elevators and all that stuff like that. But the ones that you, um, you, um, that one that you pull the door up and it comes from down to up, or it does that split where it goes like this, um, but it automatically would then go down or up or whatever like that. He helped create that. So I thank you, my good sir Alexander, for creating something for us that we use today because. It's crazy, you know, that we, we need that type of shit. And his designs are impeccable. I, I'm gonna, obviously, you, I'm seeing, even though you guys seen them here, but they're impeccable, impeccable. Now, I'm gonna give you this a little bit of information. And this time, doors of the elevators had to be closed manually, often by dedicated operators. If the shaft was not closed, people could fall, st fall through to leading to more horrific accidents. Mile improved on this mechanic, mechanic, mechanism by designing a flexible belt attachment to the elevator cage and drums positioned to indicate if the elevator had reached a floor. The belt allowed for automatic opening and closing when the elevator reached the drums on their respective floors by means of levers and rollers. Miles was granted the patent for the mechanism in 1887, thus greatly improving the safety and efficiency of elevators. John W. Make Meeker was granted a patent 13 years earlier for another related, uh, whatever, like that one, mechanic that automatically closes, whatever. But all we, we, we ain't here to talk about that man. I don't even know who John is. We ain't about to talk about John. We're going to talk about Mr. Alexander Miles. <laughs> so I want to thank you, sir, for all that you've done for us in regards to uh, help inventing and keeping our, our our safety number one priority. And also uh, uh, help help in with innovation and stuff like that. So I want to thank you, Mr. Alexander Miles, for that. I thank y'all for watching this episode. Remember, Alexander Miles and all the other people I've mentioned on this show so far have not been minorities. They don't think that they're minorities, and they haven't partaken in being a minority. So make sure you don't be a minority as well. I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching the Analytical Eye Show. I see you next Wednesday. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Avier Basil and TikTok as well. You can follow the show on Facebook and Instagram at The Analytical Eye Show and on Twitter at iAnalytical. I love y'all so much. I can't wait to continue having more conversation with y'all. I really love this episode. This week's episode was really good. I ain't gonna lie to y'all this time here. I feel, at least I feel. But I hope this continues to spark people's minds to have more conversations. Comment below. With anything you got to say, I love to hear from you. And I respect all your opinions and what you guys have to say. And make sure you take out time to look at things and discuss things that meet the eye daily. Cheers. See you next Wednesday. The Analytical Eye Show is presented by Analytical Eye Productions, a AAVR company.